93.6 Global Radio's return to El Dorado with Dave James. On this video, I'm catching up with a lady whose acting credentials speak for themselves. A filmography as long as my right arm. Patricia Brake is on the phone from her home in England. Patricia, how do you feel about where El Dorado fits into your life? Well, it's funny because it's a, it's a mixed set of circumstances. I mean, it was sad that it wasn't considered successful, and particularly by the press. I think people really, really loved it. I mean, I was constantly told how much people enjoyed it, and usually there were people who didn't watch the other soaps. There was something about ours that was different and full of sunshine that they liked. Uh, but for me, uh, the year that I spent in Spain was a very, very happy year, and I look back on it fondly. And, uh, and if I hadn't done El Dorado, I would never have met my husband. So it's funny how things work out. Oh, well, that sounds like a story there. How did you guys meet? Well, we met afterwards. I mean, he had never seen El Dorado, I have to add, or never seen me on the television, which was quite refreshing, really. Uh, but it was because of uh, one of the cast members whose husband uh, played golf at the local golf club. And I'd never been to a golf club in my life. It just wasn't part of my life. And um, I met him there. And, uh, you know, I was in my early 50s. We were both divorced. We both had children. And, and uh, But they were all, you know, they weren't ankle trappers anymore. They were all grown up. And and we got together. I mean, sadly, um, he, he died six years ago. But we had a very happy life together. So El Dorado really was part of that because I don't think we would have met if I hadn't done it. You mentioned, you know, at the time the show wasn't considered a success. No. There aren't many shows which are considered unsuccessful, which people are still talking about 25 years later. I agree, I agree. And actually, of course, we had millions of viewers. And it was, it was long, of course, long before. I mean, I remember just trying to get a telephone home was a nightmare. Now, you know, nobody would stand for the fact that they couldn't phone home every evening when they'd finished work. But in those days, we used to queue up for hours outside the supermarket to phone home. It was the only telephone we could get hold of. Luckily, because we were so far removed from it, my children would tell me what the papers were saying. But we tried not to listen to them. And we knew we had six million viewers. I mean, today, if you were in a program that had six million viewers, you would think you were the most enormous success. But, you know, now it's all so fragmented. It's all so different. And I think we kind of started the outsourcing of programs. I think we were the beginning, really, of the BBC outsourcing a drama series to uh, another company. Well, the rest is history. Now, hardly anything is made in, uh, in-house. Can you remember how you got involved with the whole project? Yes, I can. It was, uh, I, I, was, I was told about it long before I did it. Um, Tony Holland, who, uh, who uh, devised the whole program in the beginning, um, said, I'm going to write a part for you in it. I mean, and, and my friends used to laugh at me because I was always painting things and um, uh, buying funny furniture and making it look pretty and stenciling it, you know, very old fashioned now, but very popular at the time. And so he said, I'm going to write, I'm going to write this woman who's always in rubber gloves and always doing things. Um, it didn't quite work out like that in the end, but that, that was the beginning, you know. It was, it was, she was going to be a funny lady in, with rubber gloves. It's gone nine o'clock. I've got to go into the old town to see Jesus about the Webb's furniture. Really? At the removal company. The lorry should have been here days ago. God knows what he thinks they're going to sit on when they get And then, I don't know, it kind of got out of proportion, I think. I think originally they were going to call it Little England which I think would have probably worked very well. Uh, but I think it then became the sort of first European soap. I had a lovely chat the other day with um, Julie Fernandez, who played oh, your... Oh, yes, played my daughter. Yes. Uh, she's... Is she well? She's, she's good? All is well with she her? She is, yes. Yeah, she's doing um, lots of charity work. She's a little firebrand, that girl. She really is. Hugely strong. Quite surprising and wonderful. I'm not stupid, you know. Can we take a vote on that one? Yes, sir. 
She talked about um, your on-screen dynamic as a family, uh, and she said that off-screen as well, she felt very close um, to you guys who played her family on the screen. Oh, that's nice. What was that like for you as an actress, taking that role, um, you know, the, the mother hen role on the screen and then off the screen? How did that work for you? Well, you know, it's like any job, isn't it? I I'd brought up three children, so she was so wonderful. Um, she was so full of life and energy and um, I, I felt very grateful that we had her you know we could have had who knows but um, uh, I thought she was extremely well cast and that was good if you only knew the times when he said he would give up anything anything at all just to have you walk properly oh and I'm meant to be grateful am I yes that my own father cares about me oh if you only knew what no, come on, tell me. Forget it. <laughs> what should I know now that I've got to be eternally grateful for this time? Just drop it, Nessa. Oh, no, you started this. I don't want to talk about well, it. Well, I do. Tell me. Nothing. Come on, tell me, tell me. I want All to All right, know. you really want to know, yes, do you? All yes, right, I then do. I'll tell you. Yes, Drew is not your father. You mentioned that you met your late husband because of El Dorado. Was that during or afterwards? Well, afterwards, it was when we went home. When it was, when it was, okay. that's why I was saying it was sort of bittersweet. You know, we, we went back from Spain with our tails between our legs after being promised two solid years. And for a lot of us, it was difficult. I had rented my house out. My children, the youngest one had just gone to university. And I'd rented out my house for two years. And then it, it was cancelled after a year. And, you know, we were always promised that it, it, they would see it through for two years. But then, you know, producers change and the press managed to kill us. They are very powerful. And uh, that was it. So that, that the time when we came home was a really hard time, I think, for everybody. For me, um, I had to rent somewhere to live until the contract was up on my house. And, and for my children. Then I, I went on tour and did plays on tour. Um, but I met him during that time, the first few months after we came home. If, if it had been a success, I would never have met him. A year doesn't seem like long enough for a soap opera to find its feet to me. Of course not. Um, of course, you know, it was like a huge ship going in the wrong direction. And they can't just turn round. They take a very long time to turn round. And that's what we were beginning to do, I think, when it was stopped. But, you know, who knows? Who knows what goes on behind the scenes with the powers that be, the suits at the top. <laughs> the final yes. episode, it was very sad. You know, you, you were in the airport with your family and then yeah. decided to, to make a go of it in Spain. And, but it just kind of felt, I, I watched it all again very recently in, in preparation for this. Mm. And it, it did kind of feel, well, give me the rest of it. What happens next? I know, I know. Oh, Gwen, we belong here. This is our home. You don't want to be living in a semi in Greenford, do you? And what would you say? Oh, I love you. I think it was rather a shame, actually, that they didn't start it with us in England before we went out. Because I think people maybe would have cared more if they'd seen the problems that people were having, you know, finding work, life was difficult, being in debt, all the things that make you change your life, the things that, you know, divorce, end of relationships. I think if, if, if it had been like that, people would have been more involved early on. Um, and that was a shame. But it's so easy in retrospect to say it would have worked better if. I keep hearing rumours that it's going to be, you know, they're going to do it again. And I think, oh, yes. <laughs> Well, all the buildings are still here. Everything's exactly um, as you left it. Is it? It was so sad the last time I went. It just seemed like a ghost town, you know, it's like a western, really, walking around that, that site. Very sad. Where did you live when you were here in Spain? Uh, we were looked after very well, I have to say. Um, and uh, Hilary Crane, one of the actresses uh, in the show, she and I got on terribly well together and we were always sort of running each other's lines and things. And uh, we shared a house, and, and because we were putting both our sort of rents together, we had an extremely beautiful house with a pool, and it was just lovely. You know, um, I look back on that house, and my children absolutely adored it. I mean, they were very sad when it all ended, because they could come out in the holidays, and they had a ball. But I must say, it was extremely hard work as well. I mean, I remember one day we did 16 scenes in a day, 
and that's an awful lot in the heat. And I do remember one of our cameramen falling over on the beach just because it was so hot. And in the early days, I remember when they were talking to me about doing it, they said, oh, you'll have a siesta every afternoon. Well, I don't ever remember having a siesta in the afternoon. I mean, we didn't work every single day. Of course, we had days off when our scenes went up. But when you were working, it was, it was hard. It was tough. And the scripts never left you, you know. They were there, big piles of them. So you always, every spare minute, you were trying to cram lines into your head. Soaps are incredibly hard work, I must say. I have huge admiration for the people who are in them now. When El Dorado finished, you, you mentioned that you went and did some, some touring theatre and other bits and pieces. Did mm-hmm. you find that, that being part of El Dorado had a negative effect on your... Oh, of course, of course. Uh, you know, if you're in a success, everybody wants you. But if you're in something that's considered, a, you know, a flop and a failure, which it was, and people, I mean, they were very rude about it. I mean, I remember one headline, my children phoning me up and saying, it says, oh, Patricia, what have you done? <sighs> well, you know, I was uh, looking forward to paying off my mortgage. That's what I'd done. <laughs> And I was able to go away and work abroad because my youngest child was old enough to go to university. And uh, that's what we do, you know. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, going back now, knowing everything I know, I would still do it. There were times when I had a wonderful time and I grew to love Spain. And I still love Spain. And uh, I love the feeling that, that the Spanish have the, for fun and the fiestas and the, the way they kind of go out in the evenings and wander about and the grannies sit outside the houses and watch everyone you know, having, a, having a sort of little walk in the, in the cool of the evening. And, and I remember all that with great affection. I come back, you know, I come back uh, quite often to the haunts I know so well. <laughs> of course, since El Dorado, you've done loads of TV stuff and other bits and pieces. Um, yes. Being part of Coronation Street, that must have been great. Yes, it was. It was. Um, it, it, I think I was only in it for six weeks. I always seem to manage to join a soap when whoever I'm supposed to be married to or a member of someone's family is about to leave. That seems to happen to me quite a lot. So... Um, so, so that was quite a short contract. But I think I've done all the major soaps um, over the years. Casualty not long ago as well. Yes, Casualty, um, Holby City, you know, the, the Doctors in the Afternoon. I've done an awful lot of that, yes. Um, what's on the horizon for you next? Well, I'm not sure at all, actually. I'm just enjoying, I mean, you know, I'm getting on a bit now, you know. Um, I like to work, but I now like to choose what I do. And I'm becoming choosier with old age. I would have found it harder to turn things down when I was younger. But now I'm, you know, I'm quite picky. I want to do something I can be really proud of in the future. And uh, so I have a beautiful garden and I spend a lot of time uh, doing that. Go to the theatre a lot, go to the cinema a lot, doing all those things that I've got time for now that um, I'm uh, a little older than I was then. Do you have one favourite memory that stands out from your time here in Spain that you could share with me? Oh, gosh, that's awfully hard. I think I have more than one. I've never been so popular, I have to say. All my friends wanted to come and see me. I wonder why. (laughs) (laughs) I think we can all relate to that. I bet you can. Yes, you think, oh, my goodness, I can't put everybody up. Um, And, of course, the trouble was we had a big house, so we were very popular indeed. But, I mean, most of the time it was lovely, as long as they realised we had to go to work and then they could potter and say, OK, you can stay, but you cook supper in the evening when we come back from (laughs) from the site. So we managed that. I just remember, I suppose it was the sunshine. And, you know, even in the winter, it does get cold. I mean, I, I know I've, I've actually seen snow that year that I was there, uh, which is very unusual, I gather. But driving down f- from Ronda in the snow was quite scary. Things like that, I remember, because I didn't ever expect there to be snow in the south of Spain. And I didn't expect to be so cold in the winter. And on site, of course, if we had a rainstorm, and my goodness, you have some good ones, uh, our particular house, which was down in a dip, 
the sofa got sopping wet and you would be sitting there with your clothes getting damp with a damp bottom um, and those things we just laughed at you know what else could you do really and someone would try and put a towel underneath you to save you till the scene was over <laughs> and of course um, a huge cast an absolutely huge cast and the lovely people that work with us the drivers particularly I think we all became very very fond of the drivers it, it was much worse for them when it died because there was so little work around where we were. And, you know, a couple of them had got married because they thought they had a regular job. And I remember even the cleaners crying the day that they knew it was all over and we were going because it meant so much to them. It was a little city. And that was the sad thing when you read all this sort of frippery in the newspaper. And I thought nobody really understands what, what this means the end of this for so many people you know not just the actors they go back to london and you know life would be the same as it was before um but but for the people we left behind it was very hard patricia i'm so grateful to you for taking the time to talk to me today you're welcome i've thoroughly enjoyed hearing your memories and your stories um thank you for being part of our little look back on on el dorado well, and I hope you've got some very jolly things, too, to say about it, because it was, it was. And uh, I shall remember those fiestas up in the mountains forever. And uh, let's, uh, well, you never know. They might, you know, they're repeating everything else. You never know. In the future, it might come back. I would love to see people, it. People need some sunshine in their lives, don't they? And I think they miss it. And I think they particularly need it at the moment with, with Brexit and everything happening. So... You never know. Let's cross fingers. <laughs> Everything's crossed. Thank you okay. once All again. Right. Take care. 93.6 Global Radio's return to El Dorado with Dave James.